Hi Renee, it is Todd. I'm going to go over some features with you about the center instrument display here with the full touch screen that you can move back and forth here. Uh, you also have these cheat buttons off to the left hand side here. So anytime you press one of those, for example, media, will go right to uh, your satellite radio, your FM, AM, Bluetooth if you're streaming music. Your car play would also be here if you had your phone paired up. Uh, and then again, I'm gonna just go back to the home button here so I can press there, because you have the touch screen. Com, you're not gonna be using because you'll have uh, Apple CarPlay. Com would have been your telephone. So because of the CarPlay, you won't need to worry about that function. Navigation, um, really the biggest thing on the navigation is gonna be your map. And basically, again, uh, full screen, 8.8 inch touch screen here. You can move it in and out with your fingers as well. Uh, and then it's very easy to do a navigation command through this. Now, again, I don't have CarPlay paired up because I won't be able to use my phone here, but to give you an idea, you've got the speak button here that will work for CarPlay as well as for all the functions of the Mini itself, excluding CarPlay. So, if I lightly tap this, I can literally tap it. Drive to the nearest Taco Bell. And literally, there it is. There's your list of Taco Bells. I could tap on that and literally start guidance. Uh, so I can just go ahead and click on there. And it's gonna start adjusting to that particular route your arrival time here one mile out uh, if there are any traffic delays over here you'd have this highlighted in orange or red where you could tap on that and if necessary change your route based on a traffic accident or what have you uh, also the head-up display it's hard to see it but there's an arrow right there showing you the general direction to turn initially now if you're close and you know where you need to go you don't want to have her keep telling you about nav Again, I could just tap this again and literally say, stop guidance. But that's how easy the navigation is. You can do that on the fly. You can say, drive to 9850 Atlantic Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida, after tapping that and hearing the one chime. It's that intuitive. It's fantastic. Um, so that's the nav as far as the map is concerned. Uh, I will have it set up for the direction of travel and whatnot, so you're not going to be north-based, you know, kind of what the Apple Maps do, if you will. But I'm going to go ahead and click Home again here, and let's go into my mini settings. So the rotary dial here that I haven't talked about is the same, more or less, as moving this up and down to make selections. So while I'm doing that, I can rotate it to the left or to the right, and as I'm doing that, you can see how it's moving up and down. So anytime anything's highlighted in that block, I can press down on this to accept it, like just pushing down on the button, or I can tap here. So I'm gonna just press there. Now it's opened it up, and you can see the submenu there, interior lighting, exterior lighting. So I'm gonna just tap on that and tap on it again. And the first thing that comes up is ambient lighting. So the brightness of that is all the way up. So at night, you'll have this cool ambient lighting here, down in the doors that you can see, and the footwells up here, the LED lights. And by the way, this is the toggle that adjusts the ambient lighting. So you can see right now, it's kind of an orange amber. Now, if I start tapping it, you see how it slowly changes? And it's changing there as well by tapping that button. So that's the feature of that. I'm going to just tap here to go to the back screen again and scroll down to exterior lighting. This is just your turn signal. So when you lightly tap the turn signal, it'll do the triple blink when you're making a lane change. Uh, daytime running lights are going to be the LED halos around the outside of the low beam headlights. Welcome lights are going to be your interior lighting. So every time you get in the mini, all the lights are gonna turn on like I did here, pressing this one button. So light your way inside the car. Pathway lighting is basically a cool feature. So 
Uh, my garage light went out about three years ago. I uh, turned the mini off, tapping here. Once I did that, I reached over here to my turnstock like you're doing pushing forward for activating your high beams. And it turns on your low beam lights, at this case, 20 seconds. But I can adjust that any number of seconds. And what will happen is your low beam lights will turn on shining your way ahead if you will so i didn't trip over anything in the garage and then they turn off automatically after say 40 seconds in this case really cool feature so again i'm going to press here to go back to the prior screen press back again doors and key i've got that program just for your driver's door only safety 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 that's the most important thing tailgate uh so on your button remote your tailgate button only is the one that's going to be active on your remote here as far as that's concerned and also for comfort access you just have to have the key in your pocket or in your purse and you'll be able to open up that rear hatch all these other selections are not worth it wow that was a close lightning strike uh we've got storms coming <laughs> anyhow uh going down to lock automatically so if you uh hit the unlock on your remote but you don't open the door of the car as you're coming up to it the mini will automatically lock after 60 seconds i love that and then locking after starting to drive that's a great feature basically as soon as you put your mini in drive and drive off nine miles an hour or higher the doors lock nobody can get in and then i did uncheck the box here for unlock at the end of the trip that's a safety feature. You want your doors to remain locked until you unlock them, not the car doing it for you. And then, of course, the flashing of the parking lights, one flash for unlock, two flash, I'm sorry, two flashes for unlock, one for lock. Now, again, I'm going to tap here. I could click this joystick over to the left to do the same thing because you can see the arrows there, but this is just easier to show you with the video. And then going down to intelligent safety right here. You have all the safety systems, pedestrian warning, frontal collision warning, lane departure warning. The top two, of course, are uh, autonomous, I mean, semi-automatic in, in the respect of during the daylight hours of 35 miles an hour and below. Uh, what will happen is if, say for example, dead ahead, Jeremy's running out front with a soccer ball, you and Roy are entrenched in conversation. What will happen is you'll get the back of a mini in solid red in your head-up display here. If you haven't noticed that, the next thing that's gonna happen a second or two later is that many will start blinking in red and you'll get an audible warning. If by then you still haven't noticed Jeremy who's getting closer and closer by the minute at the speed of 35 miles an hour and below during daylight hours, the many will break for a second and a half of emergency braking coming to a complete stop, avoiding uh, the possibility of hitting him, if you will. Now again, those two systems are in place 35 miles an hour and below during daylight hours. Above that, you'll still get the audible and visual warning. The only difference is it brings your brake pad as close as possible to the disc in an immediate panic stop. So again, good safety features. Uh, the other part of it is you want the warning to be early, not late. You can actually adjust it for late. Don't know why, but let's keep it at early. The other feature too, is the lane departure warning. So that basically will vibrate the steering wheel when it's active if you don't use your blinker when you're making a quick lane change on the highway. So if you cross over the double lines, you'll get a vibration. That's the Mini's way of letting you know, do you mean to do that? So again, you wanna have all of those checked for safety. So now I'm gonna click back again, click back again. Speed warning, not necessary, you don't need that parking so this has the park distance control for reverse when i click here backup camera and then the sensors and then also it has it moving forward so if i press here just manually to turn it on this is what's going to come up when you're pulling into a parking spot so it's fantastic you got the best of both so it'll sense the front uh, bumper getting close to a curb or the wall as you're parking in a parking garage or what have you. This screen will automatically come up going forward. And then the other screen that you saw will automatically come up going in reverse. So that is that. And then uh, configure green. I've always turned this off, the speed warning and the climbing control. The reason being, 
if you reach 75 miles an hour and you have tapped down to green mode, which is uh, basically a fuel efficient way of driving, you can see there how it activates for green. Uh, what's going to happen is when you reach 75 or greater on the highway, you're going to get a constant chime. That's going to really be annoying. Let's just be honest. The other aspect is green climate control. We are in Florida. We want ice cold air at all times. We don't want the compressor cycling less frequently uh, due to saving some fuel. The other feature is the coasting. So what that basically means when you're in green mode, you will literally be in neutral when you let off the gas coming up to a stoplight or stop sign, if you will. Now, when you come to a complete stop, I wanna notate here, this toggle is your stop start feature. All new vehicles have it, which basically means that when you come to a complete stop at the traffic light or stop sign, your mini will shut off if you don't have it on full AC, meaning all the way power, if your t wheels aren't turned, you're not on a hill. So there's sort of concessions as to it, but you really wanna have that toggle lit. With that toggle lit, that means it's a regular vehicle. It's not going to shut off. It's going to stay running the entire time. Uh, and how that works, if it's off, to give you an idea, it's when your foot's on the brake, you let off the brake, it starts and goes again. But I'm just, I would make sure every time you turn your mini on, tapping here first, tap that to activate the amber light, and you've got a regular vehicle from what we grew up driving. <laughs> So that is green mode, okay? I'm gonna get out of that, and comfort ventilation, we'll go into that later. Uh, vehicle tracking, uh, definitely you have the check here, so that's a good feature. Now thinking about that, roadside assistance is right up here. Press and hold that button down for two seconds, you're live with roadside assistance. You do not have to have the Mini on. There's an independent battery and speaker that come from the glove box area and that's four years unlimited miles so that's a real quick way no 800 number just press and hold there's a led light that'll shine right here when it's active and you're talking live with roadside assistance so that's what that is um, now i'm going to go to the system settings that's where you would set up your phone just to show you real quick how that works you'd tap on mobile device you'd connect a new device go down to apple carplay press on that and then Kind or do the uh, CarPlay there, and this code, when you go into Bluetooth on your phone, it'll automatically start searching when you click it. That Mini 57365 will come up, if you will, in this case, and you'll pair your phone to the vehicle and be all set as far as CarPlay. Now, it'll take some commands where it'll say allow contacts, yes. It may say uh, ignore app or go to the app store, just ignore the app. We'll take care of that as we spoke about before. And then the last step is activate CarPlay. It's fantastic. It'll look just like your phone here with all the widgets and everything, making calls and all that. Now, once you have CarPlay active, instead of a light tap on here, you'll press and hold that button down for two seconds. You'll then see Siri populate down in the bottom here. And it'll sound just like your phone does with Siri. You don't have to say, hey, Siri, you just say, call Roy, text Todd. What's the weather going to be today? Do I have any appointments? Do I have any text messages? It's that intuitive. You literally can do that on the fly. You don't have to be stopped. So that's your car play, and that's your telephone. Then we go down to language. Definitely want to have it on English US. And then displays. Head up display. So this is one of those buttons I told you about realistically as far as the one through six. Five, I have it highlighted there for head up display. So a light touch goes to it. You don't have to press it just yet. And then the vehicle settings, as I mentioned right there, or vehicle status. So if I press five, because I've got it checked for head up display, I'll press it. And when I press it, the, it's unchecked now and the head-up display goes down. So if there are days you don't want to have the head-up display up, you can literally push the button, it goes down. Now, if you want to have it come back up again, just press five. Again, you can see it there, press again. Now it's checked. Now the head-up display is going to come back and display all your information. Now, what exactly does this head-up display show? Well, 
it shows your posted speed limit, your instant speed, and then also, if I press up and down on the arrow keys, because I'm in satellite radio now, it'll show the various stations as you're scrolling up and down. And once you see one highlighted, you can press OK, and it will select that station. So that's a really, really cool feature. Okay, so that's head-up display. Control display is going to be this display here. And again, I've got it on full brightness at night, which you definitely want to have. Again, I'm, I'm going to just click to the left here, make it a little easier. Um, instrument panel. You want to have all these items checked, which I have for you. So everything will appear. Center instrument is this here. Again, full brightness on the display. And then the basic display. You want to have it set for ambient lighting, which is here. You want to see the, the colors throughout your mini displayed right there. That's the best feature. So leave that. Event display, again, all of the items you want to have checked so everything will show. Wow, that was close lightning. Hopefully I uh, keep going after this video. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Now, color scheme. This is interesting. So lounge mode's what we're in right now. So you got this light blue hue here and here, right? Well, at nighttime, you may want to change it to where it's a darker hue, it's easier on the eyes. So how do you do that? Well, under color scheme, you can go to sport mode and literally tap it. You still keep your ambient lighting, but now look how it's a darker hue and just easier on the eyes, I think, at night. So this is probably another button that I will want to save for you. So again, I've got your head-up display here. I've got your vehicle status there for the tire pressure, as I mentioned before. Let's just make number four color scheme. So I'm gonna press and hold that. So now, anytime I wanna go back and change the color scheme, let's say we wanna go back to lounge mode. Just press four, and then we can click on lounge, and boom, we're back in daytime lounge mode. And again, if we wanna go back to sport mode, even though we're not in sport mode in the mini, it'll go right back again. Really cool feature. Okay. Uh, that, we've got date and time. I've got it automatically set for daylight savings time, 12 hour interval. Units, we've got that correct at Fahrenheit and all that. Uh, tone is actually where you make your base, treble, fader, balance selections. So literally, you can see how that's interactive. When I adjust it, that's why we wanted all those boxes checked because this is all interactive. Um, so that is the tone and whatnot. Notifications, this would be if you had an Android phone, so that's not necessary. Uh, actually, let me go back in here real quick. Pop-ups. Pop-ups, basically driving experience control is me switching it to green. Now I'm going to toggle up. We're going back into mid, which is the default every time you initially start your mini. And then if I toggle up one more time, all the way up we're in sport mode now permanently now sport mode will change how your transmission shifts it'll tighten up the steering feel it'll drop it down one more gear than optimal so you will spend a little bit more in the way of fuel but the fun to drive quotient is much more fun and because you have the harman kardon sound system you've got that throw to your exhaust note coming through in sport mode so super cool so i'm going to just go back into mid mode just to keep it there for now and we'll click off to the left. Uh, satellite Fairview, nah, we don't need to go through that. That's not really important. Um, getting started, again, I've got both you and Roy set up there, so we don't need to do that. The only thing I haven't done is pair the phone, but y'all can certainly do that. Contents of main menu, I've got it as onboard info for one of the widgets when we go back to the main screen. And then also the weather, which obviously is getting very uh, unattractive outside right now. Um, those are two good widgets to look at. Anytime you're driving, you can tap on them, and I'll show you that momentarily. Um, some of these functions I won't go over, but, you know, nonetheless, the biggest thing is, is driver profile. You literally could click here or go to that and then press down here or tap on Roy, and all the settings and everything are going to change for Roy versus what you have on yours. Um, vehicle status, this is a big one. So I have that program. So say for example, you ever get a flat tire monitoring light, come on that 
half semicircle with the exclamation point. Just simply go over here to six, press, and it will show your actual air pressure here. Now you can see somebody's actually reset the tire monitoring system and they've got to drive it to reset it fully. That's why it's doing the ping pong match here, but that will be fully reset uh, before you take delivery. But normally you'll show the air pressures off here to the right uh, when you reach 30 miles an hour or better. This is also where you would uh, check your oil, clicking down here, and then start measurement. And it takes about a minute and a half. It'll circle uh, zero to 100%. Then you'll have the oil pressure, or oil level, I should say, off to the left, right? Excuse me, hello, Todd. Uh, and then reset the tire monitoring, which is in the process there. Uh, service interval shows you when your next services are due and whatnot. So all of this is accessible just by pressing six. Really cool feature. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to home. And what I wanna show you is here's the weather. So this is one of those widgets that I programmed for you. So you literally can click on here and see right now we're getting pummeled with lightning and storms. Let's see what Thursday looks like. Midday, there it is there. Uh, when you go all the way to Friday, there it is there. It's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back to home here again. And we're in media radio right now. And we're in satellite radio. So remember I mentioned about presets very, very quickly on the presets. I'm just going to store some that you can over strike, if you will. You don't have to keep these in place. But one of them I'll just do here for kicks and giggles is Yacht Rock. So... How do we store that into our preset? Well, it's highlighted. I can press on it. Whoa, that was close. So I'm gonna press down here and open that up. Now I've selected it, but I'm gonna press it one more time. Now it's gonna make it a selection one under the presets. Pressing it one final time, you get the chime, and then it takes you back to satellite radio. So let's say we wanna do Oh, I don't know. Let's see here. Let's pick Margaritaville. So we'll tap Margaritaville. We'll tap it again to make it a preset. And we'll save that as station number two. So now we've got a couple of stations there. So I'm going to just simply click over here to the arrow. Click over again. Now you can see presets is, is highlighted in white. So I'm going to make that, eh, let's make that, because we did four already for color scheme. Let's make three your presets. So I'm gonna press and hold. Now you can see presets. So <coughs> because that's set, I can press three. It only shows your presets. Here's the advantage. Once you press three and you've got multiple stations, well, I don't, hope I don't get hit by lightning. Um, you can now press here and it's only going to show in your head-up display those stations that you've made as presets. <laughs> and then pressing the button OK to select which one you want. So that's the presets. I'm going to go back to home screen here real quick. Uh, and the same works for anything. So if I go back in here and I want to do... Let me go back again. If I want to do FM... And you've got your stations there locally. Store any one of those. You can do the same exact thing. So if we wanted to store this, I won't do it. But 93.3, I press on it. You see, does it, it's saying, do I want to make it a preset? Press down again. And I can make that station or preset number three. So it's really, really cool how you can just tailor that, if you will. Um, the other presets, probably number one, I would make it... Car play. And again, that would be in your media after you pair your phone. So instead of just these selections, you scroll down. CarPlay is going to be right around here. So you would highlight it like Bluetooth audio and press and hold it. Now you've got CarPlay. Well, you go right to it at any time you need to go there. Uh, button 2, I'll leave that up to you to assign. But there's all the other presets. Uh, climate control real quick. You've got adjustments for driver's side here, passenger side here. It's in full auto mode, but you can adjust the fan intensity by adjusting here. You can manually override that by pressing here to adjust the vents how you want them, but auto is the best way. 
seat heaters here and here, uh, max defrost for your windshield and side demisters, rear defrost on a 15 minute timer. You have your uh, full recirculation here or automatic recirculation. Uh, again, here's the parking sensor. Uh, this is your stop start. Keep that illuminated. This literally turns your vehicle on and off. Stability control, which you'll never make an adjustment on. Leave it in auto mode. That's the best mode. And then sport and green toggling back for the different driving modes. Now, how do you put this in drive? Pressing here, putting your foot on the brake, of course, pulling straight back. You're now in drive, and you see drive right here, okay? Park, literally, you just press P, and that's it. Take your foot off the brake, it's in park. And then reverse again, pressing, pushing all the way forward, activating your rear camera there. And then again, we can go back to park, press that. And I'm going to just turn this green light off that will deactivate that, take us back to the other screens. You have an electronic parking brake here. These are your cheap buttons. So more or less, you've got your media button here, which is AM, FM, satellite radio, CarPlay. Uh, the map is really the one you want to have. Nav, you're not going to really use that because you'll verbalize all your commands for that. And then COM, you won't be using that either because you have your CarPlay with all your contacts. So COM would be phone contacts. But again, um, these buttons here are additional features. Back is like your computer mouse. Keep hitting back. It'll go backwards to all the screens that I went to initially going through showing you everything. Uh, option is if you're in any particular function, like right now we're in FM. If I press option when I'm in FM, it gives you a sub menu of different things you can change or add. Uh, so that's basically what option is. In any screen you have, It'll give you additional things you can do. Menu is the same as pressing the home button up here. So press menu and it takes us back to those main widgets. Um, what else can I show you real quick here? Uh, the light controls, you want to keep it here at 11 o'clock. That's your auto light setting. This is your rheostat, which will dim and brighten your gauges, if you will. So you can kind of see that somewhat happening right now. So that's for that. Um, the bottom button here is your auto high beams when your low beam lights are on. You press that and it'll activate here, which basically means it's gonna turn on and turn off automatically if it senses headlights or taillights. Uh, your fog lamp button is right there. Of course, door locks, window lifts are all right here. This round button here is power fold. So it'll fold the mirror press it again it'll open it back up this is your selection of course for your power mirrors and the pivot point here uh, this will lock out the rear windows they're auto down and auto up for all four windows um, and down there hard to see is your boot release or rear hatch um, there is an adjustment for your steering wheel right here pull that lever down it'll tilt the telescope out just push that back up Paddle shifters, eh, whatever. Pulling towards you will downshift a gear. Pulling towards you on this side will upshift. Rain sensing wipers. You want to always have it all the way up here to fast. And this is illuminated in green, which means they're going to stay on at all times. You don't have to turn them on and off with cruise. But how that happens is they're off now. Click it up once, that LED's lit, and they're going to speed up and slow down automatically depending on the rainfall. Uh, cruise control, again, pretty self-explanatory. You're off and on right here, 30 miles an hour and above. Your set button's here, so plus would be set. Resume, cancel, limiter would keep it at the speed limit. Um, let's see, auto dimming rear view mirror with compass. And you do have the home link buttons built in here. Uh, this is your sunroof control. Uh, so I'm not opening that right now. And I'm trying to think what else. You do have dual power seats. Driver seat has uh, memory. This armrest does have the wireless charger, but keep in mind if you don't have a 12 or smaller uh, iPhone, it will not fit. So my 13 Pro Max will not fit. A 13 Pro will not fit. 
Uh, but you do have a USB-C where you can put your phone down there and charge it. Or you have a USB here and a 12 volt socket there as well. Well again, hopefully this will help you a little bit. Um, back in the back seats, if you ever fold those down, it's hard to see, but there are black nylon tethers that jut out between the base of the seat and the top. You pull that and it'll spring load that back forward. So you've got a 20, 40, excuse me, 40, 20, 40 split folding seat design there. Um, and of course the shade to open and close. You have your sunroof or sun visor, I should say on this side. That was real helpful on sunny mornings. Uh, dual lid vanities on both sides. Uh, and I think that's most everything. This is a long video. Uh, so please take the time to look over everything. And I really hope this helps with this part of it. This is the most time consuming thing to learn on a mini. So any questions, just let me know. But thank you both so much again.